topic of the day. <laughs> Shalom, I'm Nana. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of In the Mist. Today, I want to talk about sexual abuse, molestation, rape in the bat in the black community. In my story. I'm not sure if I actually want to talk about this. My first experiences, one of my earliest memories of being exposed to sex was maybe when I was five or six. I watched my first pornographic movie with my cousins at my grandma's house. I remember I was coming over to visit them and that's what they were watching. It was a VCR tape, it was that long ago. Watching it when I came over to visit and we were just watching it. <laughs> then this was when I was living on the west side of Cleveland. This boy next door that lived next door because it was like a duplex or whatever. He was like my age and we would play house. But of course, me being me, not Eve, wouldn't think that some of those things with playing house would happen. He sodomized me. And we were like maybe six or seven years old. <sighs> and that continued for a little while. And I never told no one. because I just didn't. I didn't know how to say no. I didn't know what was happening. It happened. And then I watched another porno with an, one of the same cousins at my dad's house. She found it. And it was a lady and a horse. Disgusting. Okay. And throughout the years, different people would touch me and even a younger cousin, a younger girl cousin of mine. And basically the same thing happened. 
she knew more about what she was doing than I and other cousins and family members has tried or did the same thing to me all my life. Some of these are blood relatives, not blood relatives, so on and so forth. And I moved to Columbus and the same thing happened again. And in between time, you know, my mother, she's a, a victim of rape. My sister is a victim of rape. And with all of that going on in the midst of these things happening, getting touched by younger and older cousins, girl cousins, boy cousins, not really understanding what it was or not, or how to say no, and how it's so secret in the black community. And that spilled out to me acting out sexually in my early teens, in some of my early 20s. Being promiscuous and really just not even caring about the sex, or not the sex, but the person. Not even caring about the person and just having sex to have sex and also catching feelings only because I'm having sex with you. But if I wasn't having sex with you, I would I would not even be interested in you as a person. And I was exposed to sex way too early. I was masturbating when I was in fifth grade, sixth grade. I was like 12, 11, 12 years old before, even before puberty. And it's sad that I've been subjected to those types of behaviors by so many people in my life. And I'm telling you, so many people in school, white people, black people, people that are older than me, people that are younger than me, sexually being perverted towards me. Friends, even friends that I thought were friends, you know, sexually um, sexually being aggressive towards me or wanting to touch me and even friends I went to school with. I never understood that part of my life. and why it happened so frequently and why it happened so by so many people in my life at a very young age and i even have a feeling that i've been i just can't remember who i have two dads they have the same name and I know one of them, I wouldn't say I know, okay, I don't want to falsely accuse anyone, but I felt that someone assaulted me, maybe one of them. And I just can't remember because there's a lot of blotches in my childhood that I don't remember and I don't understand why. (sighs) I only remember the traumatic things. 
never really the good times except for one one birthday which is kind of ironic because on my channel my youtube channel i'm talking about witchcraft and i don't know what birthday it was and it was a, a i had a pokemon cake so it's kind of ironic to you know what i'm going through now And I had this white best friend in high school. We watched porn together one time. I initiated that. And it's just that spirit of lust, that spirit of perversion on the black community. And it's so secret. And I think it's in not even just the black community, but I only can speak for the black community. The spirit of perversion and the spirit of lust is so prevalent. And I'm speaking for my family and the ones that I call family. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know if any of these experiences that I've had with previous family members that I've never really talked to about these experiences that I've had with them because it's a touchy subject. I don't know what their perception of what has happened in my life in those different situations of being sexually abused and sodomized um, I don't know their perception of it and I want to make this clear to anyone that because these are older and younger people that have sexually asserted themselves or I don't know if asserted is the right word excuse my damn thingy people that have sexually asserted themselves on me I don't know their perception of it but I want to say this because I need to be clear I've never according to my memory my memory in all the, the perverted, perverted situations that I've been in since I was five years old I've never initiated any any of those things upon anyone else, except for when I wanted to watch porn with my best friend. She was a white girl, and we watched porn. Did we do anything sexual together? No. We watched porn together, though. Okay. Because I don't know anybody else's outlook on these different situations that I have been through since I was a little girl with multiple family members, friends of friend of families, blah, blah, blah. Younger, older, girls, boys, white, black. I have been assaulted by so many family members and friends. And I want to say this. Little girls out there If, you, if somebody is touching you inappropriately, if it is something you're being touched in a way that you're not used to, you don't understand it, talk to an adult, talk to your parents. I know it's hard, especially when you come from a background. Some of us come from a background where they were sexually abused and raped by strangers and different men. And that's definitely another generational curse, I would say, that I've dealt with on both sides of my family because I've been sexually assault assaulted by both sides of my family, younger and older, girls and boys, my whole life. What I'm trying to say is, if you're being touched 
or being coerced to do things that are out of the ordinary to your young eyes, something you shouldn't be seeing. Tell someone. And parents. We just can't overlook these things because time and time again, I've seen in my family, at least on my mom's side of the family, sexual abuse being overlooked in the black community. Sometimes cussing a motherfucker out is not enough. And I told my mom before. About a cousin. That was touching me. I remember it was Thanksgiving about him touching me inappropriately. She cussed him out. And then... Another cousin, which are closely related, started touching me. What am I supposed to do about that? A girl, I, you know, and you know, my parents or my mom went through these situations. My sister. But I never, ever was talked to about sex. Talked to about... what you should do if somebody is touching you well my mom would ask somebody touching you and it's like and it would be so random it's just like what you know my whole life like even by my sibling siblings had sexually moments that should not have happened my whole life and I never understood it and parents though even the ones that are wounded and abandoned and all of that no offense but y'all gotta do better you've been through these certain situations yeah we can say all day you a survivor you strong blah 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 on the other end of that if you have having children especially, it is your duty to, to let them know, like really have serious talks about sex and being harassed and being abused by others, no matter how old you are. Nine eleven. that's the time. And in this day and age, I kind of look at that as a symbol of war. (laughs) Because I've been battling a war lately. I've been battling a war of oppression, suppression, control, narcissism, even death. Witchcraft, necromancy, not me personally, but the others around me. So I have been having a hard time. Let's see, let's look at the Bible app. Genesis 9-11 And I will establish my covenant with you Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore By the waters of flood Neither shall there 
anymore be a flood to destroy the earth. But this time it is fire. Exodus 9-11 And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boil was upon the magicians and all and upon all the Egyptians. Joshua 9-11, there, Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore now make ye a league with us. I don't know what victuals it victuals. Food or provision. Okay. Anyway, like I was saying, parents, y'all gotta do a better job. Well, most of you parents of the millennials, y'all, y'all childbearing years are pretty much over. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest. Thank the Most High, because you know, I grew up with a single mom. And yes, I learned some things that I could take into my adulthood. At the same time, in a lot of areas, my parents, both of them, dropped the ball tremendously. And I see that in a lot of so-called millennials, even some of the Gen Xers. Gen Xers have to have it a slight. Gen Xers are they're in a different time zone. I'm gonna just say that. As far as the so-called millennials, I feel like the parents really dropped the ball. The whole crack epidemic, like, nigga, I'm a crack baby and I'm not even an 80s baby, okay? Besides that, sexual abuse, little boys and little girls. If you're being touched inappropriately, no matter who the person is, no matter how old they are, if they're your age or you're not your age, if they're younger or they're older, you need to tell someone. And I feel like when I did initially tell someone, I didn't get heard and it still continued to happen. Like, what more can we do? Why is this being swept under the rug? And why is it so hard for black people women girls to speak out when they're being sexually assaulted and why is it so prevalent in the black community and i just feel like you know you know black people are just under that spirit of lust and not just when it comes to sex but when it comes to so many things and it spills over to the children and you know that's why i say save the children Who's going to save the fucking children? You know, you want to kill us? You want to abuse us? You want to call us mentally unkept and unstable and want to just shoot us up with drugs? You don't care about our plight. And in, in actuality, it, it, not even our own people cares about what the hell we going through. And I know many people are not going to understand this, but... You know, some people are just created to be destroyed. And I'm in a situation where I'm not trying to be subjected to anybody else's carnal, worldly mindset, fleshly mindset. You know what I'm saying? And I want to get this out before, before whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because life is too short and I'm not about to let nobody convince me or tell me of anything that I've I, tell me about my story and what I've been through and how things have happened 
Since I was a young girl, I've been sexually assaulted and abused by multiple family members, friends, girls, boys, and I never really spoke up about it. And then the one time I did, it was just, it was a disaster. My, my, the, the mother of this person that I told, she, she was a drunk, she, she, alcoholic, all types of drugs. She crashed her car on Thanksgiving, so-called. So it turned into something else the same day that, you know, it was a disaster. And that's my story, okay? And my sexually, me being sexually assaulted and abused by younger women, girls younger than me, boys older than me, vice versa, blah, 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 you know. <clears throat> it did spill over in a bad way and over to my, my adulthood, into my teenage years, into my... You feel me? It spilled over. And I'm gonna be real. I was out here being a hoe because I didn't know nothing about sex. I didn't care nothing about feelings because in my mind... And still, I'm trying not to feel this way. I, I really feel that people don't really give a fuck. And that's so hard coming from a person. I've always been like the naive type, so innocent. And I still am in some situations. And that's how I get in trouble. Like, I'm so naive of the world, you know? Even in my, my experience in, in New York, like, I did not... Look, this whole New York situation, this whole Arizona situation, look, those were a whole New York wasn't even the plan, but it came it became the plan last minute and only the Lord did that. I don't even care what nobody said. The most high did that. But I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but real shit, like like I was saying, I was a hoe. I was a hoe. Now, I ain't gonna say that it got as bad as some of my family members have told me. Like, how many bodies these people? I worked with a guy that would keep his body count on his dashboard on a notebook, piece of paper. He had, at that time, he had like 36 bodies. I'm like, nigga, why? That is not cute. That's disgusting. I ain't up there. But that don't even matter because I didn't commit adultery I didn't did the most and back in the old days I would have been stoned outside of the damn city thank the most high Yah I'm not okay thank the most high Yah that Christ came you know I still sin I'm not perfect I smoke weed you feel me I, that's it is what it is okay as far as the sexually being sexually abused raped little girls little boys please speak up Someone is touching you or exposing you to things that you know you shouldn't be watching. You feel me? I mean, I, I don't know if I knew. I don't know. I'm like, what? I just watched this shit. Like, what is this? And it, it was a fucking rabbit hole that affected my whole life. You feel me? Little girls, little boys being touched, being sexually assaulted by family members, friends, people at school. Tell someone. And don't be scared to speak your story. Because 25 years later, here I am talking about this. Because I don't want anything to be misconstrued. Because life is short. You feel me? Life is short. I've never really sexually put myself onto anyone. Unless, of course, it was a consented as an adult. You know, when I actually... You know, got interested in sex. Like all this time I was having sex, I really wasn't interested in sex. I was just acting out things that I was exposed to way too early. Way too early. I didn't start really enjoying sex, even though I was sexually acting out since I was, like I said, I started masturbating when I was like 11, 12 years old. I mean, we all know what an orgasm is. 
between then and now is definitely not the same. Other than me sexually consenting when I started actually enjoying sex, yes, have I asked or have I put myself upon a man that I know wanted to have sex with me? Yes. Okay. As far as any other sexual act in my childhood that was pushed upon me, I've never crossed those lines with anybody. Like I said, I did watch porn with my best friend. She was a white girl. We're not best friends anymore, but. And because we watch porn together is not why we are not best friends, but we are. I mean, but we're not best friends anymore. It was a different reason. So. It is what it is. We need to speak up. Parents, you need to talk more about these types of situations, especially in the black community. Because they're not spoken about enough. They're not spoken about enough. Even by the sexually abused parents. Like I would ex- I would expect, I would think that a person that was sexually abused would be more attentive to these types of subjects. But I didn't even get talk. I didn't even have a sex talk with my mom. I told I remember I told her I lost my virginity. She started crying. Why are you crying? We never had these talks. But you've always told me your stories about different things, horrible things that has happened to you. Or you asked me randomly if somebody was touching me. That is not talking about these subjects. That's not talking about having a real conversation and understanding, making your child understand what you should do what they should do in those types of situations and how to recognize and what body parts are off limits to everyone. Even mommy and daddy at a certain age, body parts are off limits. That's what I think. And then it and it spills over this spirit of lust and perversion spills, spills over from the generational before and now it's in the children. And I definitely experienced that my whole life. The lust and not even, it may not even be the lust of my parents. Maybe it was the lust that they pick up from something else or they're just not, or whatever. Whatever, you know, hole that you got open that is allowing the damn enemy to come in and attach itself to you. Even with my, the spirit of lust, like, I've I've seen so many sec, uh, perverted things from so many family members. I've even seen and heard some perverted things from my own mother and father. I'm telling you, <sighs> I can't help the family that I was born into, but goddamn, but god, goddamn, I'm telling you, it's been a journey. It's been a journey and I ain't gonna let nothing or no one try to misconstrue who I am as a person. I've always been a quiet, young, quiet girl to myself and I try to stay that for the most part. But I feel the issue that I have is with most people, especially nowadays, especially me identify myself as an Israelite. I know, since I'm not of this world, people ain't gonna love me. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm in a sticky situation, period. And I can't help the family I was born into. I I can't help it. And I just don't want me as a person, Nana, Nina, I have so many names. I have so many names. I I could go down a whole list of all the nicknames that I have, I've had and I currently have in my life. You know what I'm saying? Nina, Nana, Nana Bambino, Juanisha, I don't want anybody to misconstrue on who I am as a person. 
Okay? I've never sexually assaulted anyone. Not to my knowledge, ever. And would I ever try to do that? No. Have I ever tried to do that? No. Because that is a subject that, you know, I actually heard my cousins talking about earlier today and I thought that I should speak on it. About being sexually assaulted. So, that's a little part of my story. I don't feel like I need to go any more in depth about... I mean, I could, but nobody want to recall some of these experiences that I've had. I I said nobody, Uh, nobody as in me, okay? I don't want to experience or recall any of these experiences I've had with people because it's been a lot, over 20 different people or 20 different experiences, but I mean, shit, I could see 20 different people has sexually assaulted or did something very inappropriate towards me or on me without me I didn't like I never knew how to say no even 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 in my adulthood there's been moments that I didn't know how to say no even when I wanted to say no So, that's the issue I've had. But as I've gotten older, I am 25 now, nigga. What? (laughs) Anywho, I've learned that... Well, not I ever learned. I've, I've learned how to say no, and I'm finding that people don't like that. People don't like that I have... I've created boundaries for myself. People don't like that. And my whole family has definitely showed me that I'm not, people don't like the fact that I'm not insecure and woe is me. Yeah, definitely. Right now, woe is me because I'm ass out. Okay? Like like my cousin, her ass was literally out earlier. Ass out. Okay? Like, as far as the financial situation right now, it's not really popping. And that's why I'm ass out. And I've just been looking for a job. But that's neither here nor there. But, and if you are, if you are being sexually assaulted, you should still tell an adult. If you don't tell an adult or if you're of an age that you are, well, if you're grown, should I say, and you're still being sexually assaulted or anyone is being sexually perverted towards you. And I'm telling you, so many experiences in my life where people's boyfriends, my own family members boyfriends like trying to cross that line with me my my boyfriend's brother trying to cross that line with me rest his soul i've had so many who have even attempted to have sex with me that i'm like nigga this family what are you talking about you know what i'm saying like So many experiences where it's like, bruh, I, and like I said, one time I did do it. One time I did commit adultery with my friends, not my friends. I don't even want to go in this story. Not friends. I, it's not my friend. The good thing I said friend, because it, that's not the truth, but it, the truth is more worse. Okay. So we just going to leave it like that. Okay. I was young. I was 19 though. And it just should not have happened. You know, and thank the most high, I got the most high. Thank God, you know, I read the Bible. Okay, thank God I know Christ. 
I think I know him. I feel like I hope I'm just not just spiritual and I really don't have God like that. I feel like that's the worst place to be, to be super spiritual, but really don't know God or have God in your life. I mean, Yahweh, then you might as well just call me my fucking witch. Excuse my French. I'm just saying, okay? You might as well call me a witch if I'm godly, but I don't know the power of God, you know? If that makes sense. I don't know. But <laughs> this is basically me saying, even if you're an adult, you're a child, you're being sexually abused, let somebody know, okay? You ain't got nobody to talk to. You don't want to go to a counselor because I'm definitely that type because I've done therapy before. I'm just like, what are you helping? You're just asking me questions that is like, nigga, I know what's going on. I just don't understand it. <laughs> like, why the fuck am I going through this? You feel me? And that goes back to the whole, you know, witchcraft bullshit that me personally, like I said, generational curse occultism, witchcraft, addiction, perversion, lusts are some generational curses that I have been going through my whole life. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Generational curses that I did not even want to, that I didn't realize was really a generational curse. I thought I was aware of all the generational curses, which was addiction. No, it's way more than that. <laughs> There's so many dark chains on my bloodline, on both sides. You know, and I, I, I would hate to say it, even, even murder, maybe. Even murder. I could even say that. Holy Spirit, I just, I just invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to surround me, you know, because at the end of the day, all I have is him. You know, I'm in a world that is so worldly, so carnal, they don't understand me in my walk. And they never will. They, they never will. And it's dangerous, you know, for me not to have my own back right now. I'm sleeping on somebody's couch, okay? And around people that I know don't have their best intentions towards me and that's dangerous that's dangerous and I've been showed like I said I'm I'm battling different spirits that I really didn't understand how prevalent and strong they are within my bloodline not just me I thought like oh I'm good you know I'm not sinning like that no my, I'm not I'm not out here just you know, busting it open, you feel me? I'm not out here lying and stealing and, you know, worshiping false gods. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm, I feel like I'm at a spiritual level where it's not even about me anymore. It's not even about you anymore. Like at first, when I first started my spiritual walk with Yahweh, some say Yahuwah, we're still, you know, somebody need to do a lesson on the name again because, you know, anywho, um, <laughs> when I first started my spiritual journey, it was not, it was, I mean, it was just about me and me coming out of the world, but now I'm in a spiritual place and a physical place where I'm realizing not only am I in the world, even though I already knew my family was, but this is some different level type shit. The fact that I feel like I've come to a point, the fact that my family is in the world, it is, I'm allowing it. I'm not even gonna say allow. Yes, I'm gonna say allow because I'm grown. I should have had my money up and this is a money situation for me. You know, they may wanna call me crazy, blah, 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 but Realizing that my other family members are in the world and it's affecting my life. 
And who the fuck is praying for the family? You know what I'm saying? Who the fuck is, who's praying for the family? Like, I mean, genuinely. I don't mean to know false false gods or nothing like that. I mean, who who praying for the family? And, and I feel like, since I feel like I really am walking, I know I am walking in the truth as much as I possibly can. Like I said, I'm a pothead. You feel me? I've done some things in my life that I'm not proud of. But when somebody really start walking in the truth, especially in you carrying the burdens of both sides of your family, I, f I feel like I'm carrying the burdens of both sides of my family. I'm not complaining, okay? Because I was called to this for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I am here. You know, when you're aware, you feel like you're carrying both, depending on your situation. Speaking for me, I feel like I'm carrying the, the, the chains that are spiritual. I feel like I'm carrying the chains of both sides of my, my family that, that have been passed down from generation to generation. Even even some family that is married in, I feel like I'm carrying some generational chains. And it's tough. It's tough. You feel me? And there's people out here that hate the fact that I want to get off, I want these chains off of me. And some people will even try to hurt me because these chains, I'm not fucking with no more. Especially with this witchcraft. Especially with this occultism. It's a whole nother level. And I'm not fucking with them chains. I don't want those chains. I don't want any chains. If they're not the chains of the most high yeah, I don't want them, okay? And <laughs> Going back to this whole lust thing and being sexually assaulted and perversion in the black community, I don't want that chain either. And I don't want the chain of a, a false witness bearing against me, whether I'm a dead or alive right now today, okay? I don't want the chains to bear the chains of a false witness. So that's just where I'm at right now. Okay. Viewer discretion is advised. This is uh, explicit content. Should have said that at the beginning, but hey, here we are. Okay. You being sexually assaulted in any type of way, whether they're touching you or not, whether they're just exposing you to something that is inappropriate, let somebody know. And if you can't talk to nobody else, talk to your damn self. But turn your motherfucking camera on so you won't look crazy okay because niggas get put in asylums for talking the most high out loud okay aka me okay so turn your camera on turn your recorder on to make so so you won't be deemed as crazy and they won't lock your crazy ass up for exposing the truth Talk to your damn self. Talk not even to your damn self, because the most high in the mist. Two or three gather in his name. He is there in the mist. Okay. And that's why I'm having this conversation because somebody else was in the mist of this conversation. Me, the most high, and somebody else listening on the other end. And I'm binding, I rebuke, and I renounce and I denounce the spirit of lust, perversion on me, especially. My husband my family I rebuke it I renounce it I denounce it and I bind it and I break it in the name of Hamashiach Yahavashai okay it will not prosper it will not prosper no longer in, in my life in my husband's life I don't know his story but I don't you know sometimes I feel like I don't even know who he is but 
in your lives be each and cast it out but y'all y'all gotta do that do that do that uh, y'all gotta do that yourselves because i ain't trying to pick up nobody else's demons and i'm also at a point where i can't pray for my uh i feel like i can't pray for my family no more these niggas don't want to change all this time i've been walking with the most high for at least four or five years maybe six maybe a little bit more than that Maybe four or five years. These things are not going to change. And I can't let your demons become my demons. And I can't let your burdens become mine. Because I got to have my oil. When the bridegroom arrives, okay? That's just on period. And I, you know, I'm just asking for a hedge of protection. I bind and I rebuke the spirit of premature death over my life and my husband's life. The spirit of infirmity, I bind it and I break it and I renounce it and I denounce it in the spirit. It will not manifest in the physical. I bind it. Return to sender. Return to sender. Every pit that the enemy has tried to set for me and my husband. You will fall into a Satan Psalms. Read the, read the book of Psalms. Psalms is a pretty good book. Okay. Like I said, parental advisory. I love y'all. Shalom. Don't be scared to speak up. And it's how you do it. Okay? Don't be screaming and yelling and crying 20 years later like I did. Not even that because I tried when I was younger. But it came out. It came out later in life as well. Not too long ago, actually. Last year in December. Before I went to Arizona. It ain't too late to talk, but you know. Be wise. Be wise. And tell your story. Speak to whoever you need to speak to. And if you ain't got nobody to speak to, turn the camera on. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of In the Mist. I am your, no, I'm your host, <laughs> Nana Bambino. And Lord willing, I can get this on YouTube if I convert it from an MP3 file. Look, that's TMI. Anyway. Hopefully I can get this on YouTube, but follow me on Twitter, uh, Instagram, at Nana Saintly, Saintly Entertainment, Saintly Company. Those are all my three handles. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Nana of Saintly. Spaces in between all those. And check out my website, saintlycompany.com. have more products coming soon. Products, shea butter, candles, Lord willing, okay? TMI, but that's what I was making before. I lost everything, so hopefully soon you all will be able to purchase those items again and view other content. So, it's been real. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Nana. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share on all your platforms and hey I'm on